All right, here we are. We're back again to discuss all the problems of the world, even though at the moment I have to say that most Democrats feel a lot happier than they felt uh, not too long ago, actually. It's been really, really rapid. Can you believe how fast it changed? Yeah, it's remarkable. And, you know, the thing that I find most um, most interesting, I don't know if you've come across this uh uh, he's a Republican pollster. His name is Luntz. And he's been around since, I remember I used to see him in the Bush years, way back when. Oh, it's, I think um, uh, I just did a show yesterday with Nancy in the garden. Nancy, who also happens to be the mother of our good friend. Sean Briscoe, yeah. John, and she was just talking about him. Yeah, so he, this, this Luntz guy, he is definitely pro-Republican, but he's also a numbers person and he's reasonably honest, unlike most of these Republicans. And I just saw him say, I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. The, the, the last 30 days of the flip in the polls and what he's sensing as what feels like Obama in 08, this, this you know, movement thing that's developed with you know, all the people, for instance, that are volunteering. I mean, hundreds of thousands of people. Oh, I know. They can't, they, they're turning them away. There's so many. Yeah. And that, that's the thing that that's never good news for the guy who says he has the movement. You know, I think the kind of movement he has is a different kind of movement at this stage. <laughs> something that requires his deities. Yeah. Something that requires the depends. I know. Anyways. So, uh, yeah. So that's been a huge shift. And I mean, by the way, in, in tune, pretty precisely with her with her chart, because remember we used to say last year, just wait because Kamala's chart in the election cycle is really Always strong. Said. Right. You, and you turn and say, this is interesting, but Kamala looks good. So Biden must win because Kamala looks so good. Correct. And I mean, the only the thing that didn't work there is that Biden couldn't make it. But, you know, Biden, the curious thing is he could have a year ago or you know whenever he could have said okay i'm gonna pass oh, yeah. the torch like he said he was going to because he had said i'm a bridge candidate but then he changed his mind right but right. i think the fact that biden resisted is better for kamala so this has turned out yeah because think about it if if, if kamala is the nominee a year and a half ago there's way way more time to attack her you know to to cause problems for her the fact that she comes in and really quickly, you know, it, ma it makes it a lot more difficult. It also has put Trump in a really bad bind because Trump, Trump ultimately is not a smart man. He's just guy, he's like a one trick pony. This thing, this switch has him all disturbed. He doesn't know what to do, you know, yeah. because he, it, you know, it'd be hard for anybody, but especially for him. So it's, it's worked out really, really well. You know, the only thing I can think of though, is that I, I said this in one of my recent videos, be careful because now we're in this territory before the convention and into next week. There are pressures on her chart. And I think this is what correlates with she's come out with this uh, economic plan thing. And that will open you to more attacks because she's talking about, you know, it sounds a little bit like price controls. You know, then they can say to you, oh, yeah. this is too much. But like they're doing good stuff like help with first time home buyers. And oh, yeah, no, for sure. For sure. No. So she's she's definitely. The key thing is the momentum. The momentum is on her side, and the momentum is, uh, at the, well, it's pretty obvious. I mean, this guy is doing these press conferences, and he starts out by saying, Kamala is, Kamala is destroying the world. Well, once you say that, what else is there to say, right? Kamala has destroyed oh, the world. Also, he said, oh, no, they want everybody to have health care. Hmm. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like that's yeah. a bad thing. Yeah, that's like how they, they attack uh, Tim Walls, you know, by making them really scary and because why because he feeds kids lunch you know because he feeds them and he gives them they call him tampon tim like know. that's you know like he made sure children have the young girls have the ability to have something to help them when they start because when you're in school especially middle school you might just start your period all of a sudden and I, it's totally true i mean and the thing is they're not landing and the problem they have now is that Kamala and Tim Waltz are very good communicators. This is a really difficult thing to overcome. You know, they, they were counting on the fact that 
Biden Biden hasn't lost his mojo. He's lost his communication ability. Yes, makes it a lot harder. You know, and I, I think I've mentioned this uh, more than once. Where if you want to see where Biden was, just compare when he made a speech in 2016. Go on Google on uh, YouTube and type Biden Democratic Convention 2016. Listen to him talk then, and compare it to the way he talks now. And the problem with politics: politics is very very visual. If you give off the impression that you know you're not 100 percent there, you're open to attack. It's it's a uh, it's it's not and a good thing. And that debate he did, it was a, it was a, even though the next day he did so good, it mm -hmm. it really was a disaster. Yeah, it wasn't. It it left uh, you know. I and mean, the main thing is this is what ended up happening is it left an impression that wasn't good, but it really was in the numbers because okay, I mean, don't you find it kind of unusual if you want to think that's what it is, but why have the polls turned around so so massively in a, in a month you know i think people are just glad they have another choice yeah well yeah and i and it uh well and by the way by the way this is another thing i remember thinking this before this happened even before biden got in trouble i remember thinking wow oh, this thing went to kamala i mean that would be the biggest insult to the maga movement because kamala is the very thing they don't they don't want oh. that's that's the thing that they definitely cannot accept. They couldn't believe. And, and Trump was saying, oh, he's going to claim his, his seat come the convention. No, she, no, he isn't. No, he, this is the thing that what Trump doesn't understand is that it, the power of the Democratic Party is, in the end, you can criticize them all you like. They're a team. So the team, it's a team decision. So Biden there was, yeah, the party ran over him because the party thought, no, there's a better candidate in this situation. And I know that that upsets some people. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, Pelosi, what? Are you going to be mad at Pelosi for the fact that it turned out the way she thought? What about Biden? Is Biden well, going to say? Wasn't for, she wasn't for Kamala. She wasn't for her. She was for not, yeah. It to be an open uh, thing. They wanted somebody else. I, I've heard this. I can't tell you if it's true. That Pelosi actually went to Biden and asked him to pick a different VP for the second term. Okay, well, that I don't know, but I doubt, let, let me put it to you this way. I bet you anything that Pelosi is political enough, she's savvy enough. If you ask her now, she will oh, say, she, I, love, I love Kamala. She she was just on the news and she could, can't speak highly enough for her. Yeah, exactly. She so, did mention that when Kamala was running for, Kamala was running for DA or something, she was pro a different person, not her. She did say I did that, but boy, she she looked real bad, and she came through with flying colors. Yeah, and I mean that that's the thing that I mean, cause, you know, because we can do coulda, woulda, shoulda, till the cows come home. This could have been this, it could have been that. You know, it is what it is. She's there, and she's doing really, really well. Focus on that. Wow. You know, and by the way, here's the thing too about Kamala that I didn't mention. Well, maybe I did. I can't remember, but Kamala during the White House years when she was Biden's VP. The whole time she was under a lot of Pluto pressure. Really? You know what that planet does? Yeah, Pluto, because she has her sun moon, the Pluto was squaring, right? Right up to the point where now it's just ending, right? Pluto is a planet that that when it's around, it pressurizes you and it transforms you into a higher level of power. It's what you're seeing now. Kamala seems a lot different now than she was before. She, she seems sure to be does. really in her, you know, body and mind. She's basically really sure of herself. That's what that planet accomplishes. It was I almost can, like, oh, I'm here for the ride. Yeah, before. I mean, but yeah. not, not anymore. I mean, the, the whole I'm point glad is, she he won president because she wouldn't have shown as good as she's doing now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So and, and I think her her uh, Tim Walls, their connection is he's an Aries. He has the moon in Aries. And his Jupiter is right next to her moon. When when, Ju when people have Jupiter moon contacts, they're automatically friendly with one another. Even if there are other things that may eventually cause a problem in that relationship, there's always a, okay, okay, yeah, I like you. You know, no matter what, I can get along with you. So I think it's a great pick. And you've seen the guy. Can you imagine? Okay, we'll see when JD debates him. That's all I have to say. Just watch, you know, because he's not the kind of person you want to pick on and throw insults. He knows how to punch back. He knows and how he, to handle a bully. Oh, totally. And I mean, he knows how to communicate. This is not good news. And and uh, on the other side, Trump keeps saying Kamala's dumb. Okay, we're going to see. We're going to see who's dumb, you know. Did you take a look at September 10th about their uh, debate? Yeah, it's not, it's not good for Trump. 
this does not September for Trump is in fact this is the you've other thing you've been saying about, this for a while you've been saying September was bad exactly but now the only thing I don't know this is where people out there I'm not sure about this because the one thing he's managed to do through the Supreme Court because the Supreme Court and that immunity thing is creating a lot of problems for the legal community you know the now the Marchand case it's not clear that Marchand will sentence him you know what do you feel about that what are you getting because I, I think he's going to sentence him to jail but I think he's going to allow him to finish running for president well see this is the thing that at that stage of the race it's not even important that he won't be going to jail. It's just the message. Trump hates the message. If he has to hear a judge saying, you're a good for nothing, cheating, you know, liar, and we're going to, this, this is the punishment. This was a jury that came through. You oh, don't want no. to go and make totally. decisions and judge just poo poo with it because he's special. No, well, he's not. totally. And the thing with that is that is that the legal pundits that I track are not sure that Marchand would be able to sentence him till after the election. And when I looked at the charts for 16 and 18, like September 16, September 18, it's a little mixed in that it's possible that on the 16th, he could say, well, I'm not going to sentence you. But then I don't know what the reason is, but that territory in there going into the following week, Trump is really worked up and upset. He's upset about something. So, I mean, the logical thing would be to say, well, he's upset because he got sentenced. Well, I don't care if he gets sentenced or not because he's going to be upset and that's all that counts, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, and he has a lot to be upset about because so many things are not working out and he's not capable of arguing it back. He, he talks nonsense. It's like you're watching someone do word salad, goes all over the map, goes from Hannibal Lecter to Kamala to to communism to come on I mean, give me a break. yeah yeah i mean it's yeah. pretty pretty extreme i mean i i i heard a person say uh, which is this is like the same as you know the thing with biden go back for instance go look at the debate in 2012 with paul ryan biden was a totally different person even in 2016 right same is true for for trump go back and listen to trump's a speech four years or four eight like the more you go back four years eight years he used to talk in full sentences he yeah can't do that anymore he can't do that anymore this is very risky when you're running against the prosecutor because prosecutors are geared to hear what you're saying and to question you right? and then go for the throat exactly exactly you know and by the way uh, like when i add to that kamala's plan is kamala's chart are perfectly wired to attack him and to get in his face. There are definite links there, you know, it's there. Cause that, she's got this big full moon wired into his um, uh, criminal planets, you know, like well, the, the planets in the 12th house. So- He's gonna expose the hell out not, of None of that is good news. And, and it's sort of the logic that she is there to confront him, you know, to, to get in his face. It's not a soft approach at all, you know? So I'm amazed that he thinks he always thinks the solution to everything is more of me, right? I'll just go on there, I'll convince people. And because he was able to do it to Biden, which by the way, what have you heard him now? How many times he said, I wish I hadn't debated him. That's what he's saying, right? Trump said that? Oh yeah, more than once. More than once in his rallies, he goes, oh my God, if I hadn't debated him, he'd still be there. Because he wants Biden to be there. <laughs> so, so now think about it, right? That whole period, oh, he's winning, he's winning. Is he really winning? He arranged his own demise by doing oh, too well in the way. It, it slapped him in the face when they said Harris was running. Oh, for sure, slapped for sure. Really hard, they all went back. But it, this is the other thing. There's a lot of chatter behind the scenes and there's many Republicans that are thinking, oh, Jesus, this guy is, we just can't go with this guy. No, and here's the other thing, right? We're in this zone where a lot of Uranus energy going into the convention and into early September. There's a ton of Uranus energy. So the possibility of, of shocking, unexpected things happening goes way up. We've already had several because the Biden debate was a shock. Being, him being almost killed was another shock. Kamala coming in was another shock. But the way I interpret this now, and of course, since if I say, well, shocking, unexpected, then whatever I say, 
you know, it could be the opposite <laughs> of this, right. but, but my sense is that he's more, Trump is more exposed to the shock now because he's part of this Uranus thing, 100%, so is J.D. Vance. So if, if I had to guess, I would expect something to do with him being a shocking thing rather than thinking it's going to be something to do with Kamala or Tim Waltz. It doesn't seem right to me, especially because the convention energy is good for her. It's, it's well aligned, you know. The, that yeah, whole you know, people are talking about conventions like they were the Republic. Oh, Linda, do you see horrible? I don't see horrible things happening. Might be some protests, but I'm not seeing a bomb going off or anything. Yeah, or even the thing that it would be some huge upset related to Kamala or Tim. No, I think it's m oh, much more likely yeah, the other it. way, right? So, yeah. yeah. I know Beyonce is going to perform. Yeah, well, that, by the way, that's another pattern that anytime you can go back to 2016, 2012, 28. So the Democrats always attract the real acts, you know, the good performers. And Trump can't get anybody to perform for him because, well, you know, Ted Nugent, you know, Ted Nugent. And, Will be. Yeah, Ted Nugent. Uh, but, so uh, his, tr his chart is still looking pretty weak. Uh, well, it's not just weak. It's dangerously weak in that. It's it's a it's a besieged type of situation, right? So, you know, and here's the thing too that I've been saying for years about his health, and of course, people expected, well, why doesn't he just keel over already? Well, he's dropped. It's pretty clear, you know, that Trump compare him to four years ago, he is diminished. He's lost a lot of his mojo. He can't communicate properly. He goes on tangents a lot. His words slur. I don't know how he managed that thing with Elon Musk, you know, sounding like Sylvester the cat. Now they're trying to tell us that, that uh, no, it was maybe that there was something wrong with the sound. I don't know. Is that oh, really right. true? He was, he was... Yeah, yeah. So, and, he, and, you know, he manages to constantly step in it. I mean, I think that if you go back to 2016, especially, he was more politically attuned to what was going on. He was right. sharper. So now because of his decline. So that is what health is. If, you, if your well-being declines, your health is in decline. Right. But who knows when the actual event, you know, the, the a, a more major. It does that same language that America is in the hole and in hell. No. That's, that's if she good. wins, oh, it'll be so terrible. He's always said that. No, and I mean, look, come on. There's this photo of uh, J.D. Vance on a plane and he's he, they're doing a thing with this other guy talking about how the country's falling apart. And the Wall Street Journal is on the table and you can see market uh, inflation is down. The market is up. I mean, like, come on, guys, come on. This is like gaslighting, you know, gaslighting on a major level. When that day that the market dropped uh, uh -huh. about a week ago, right away, I, I, I don't know how I ended up on this feed. I must have clicked on it at one point in the past and it pops up on me. It's a MAGA thing. And this MAGA person was saying, oh, I told you, see, look, the world is falling apart. Yeah, they do. Trump announced it too. That lasted two days. It was a two and day. And it's over 450 now. Yeah, 40, exactly. over 40,000. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. So, I mean, the indicate that's another thing. Okay, think about that. All right. So this is the other thing. People are always saying Trump is this really lucky man. He's not lucky. Okay, think you about it. You said so. He's not lucky. If you were lucky, he wouldn't have had COVID in his last year because COVID is the worst thing that could happen to the guy. If you were lucky, right now the economy would be cratering. It's not, right? Everything is going against what he's trying to do. If you were lucky, there would be no woman there torturing him. That would be luck, like Biden yeah. would have stayed in the race. He's a really unlucky man when you really think about it in terms of getting his result because that's what right. luck is supposed to be now if you say he's lucky and that he hasn't been thrown in the slammer yet that's true but i say i say yet in capital letters yet because this yeah. guy is asking for it you know based on where that chart is sorry but i know, you know it's, it's not good he said that I, he. i'm gonna do a video later but i had a definite hit big time strong hit number one about jared kushner i keep seeing him being taken to a jail in the orange outfit. Really? His, his hands, uh, and there's, it might not be till 26 or 27. I'd be curious later, you could check his chart. But I see that happening. Well, you one thing I remember, happen? he's a Capricorn and, uh, you know, this is always the, the question because 
again, you know, we will say oh, Gemini this or Capricorn that. And right away, people say, well, that's bad. I'm a Gemini. Okay, just to make this clear, the, pla the, the chart is the interfacing of your will with your cycles. So if you don't want to be thrown in jail, don't do criminal things. It's not complicated, right? Uh, Kushner and all these people, they're constantly pushing the envelope, going over yeah. the line. So then they get in trouble. So Saturn entering Aries, which it, uh, it's from next year a little bit, but especially 26 and 27, that brings the Capricorn people into pressure, right? Which if they've been committing crimes, then they have to face it. So yeah, I could see that. Sure. You know, yeah. he's a slum lord and who knows, you know, he, uh, yeah, it's entire, I mean, look, just the fact that what a laughable thing. How, how many billion did he get from Saudi Arabia, that guy? Three. Yeah, and, and they're always talking about how the Biden crime family. I mean, what a joke. What a joke. Yeah, well, they yeah. sold information to them that that he's he couldn't even get a clearance and Trump forced them to give him a clearance. That's right. how crooked he was. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, that's the other thing, too. You know, sometimes people say, oh, uh, how do you explain Trump? You know, just listen to what he says, right? A person's keywords are actually what they are. He always uses the words like fake, scam, you know, who yeah. do you know that? Oh, AI, she used AI. If you look at his stuff, you can see where he used AI. Always totally about true. crowd size. Totally true. But again, see, this is the thing. You open yourself up to ridicule and to the other side, counterpunching and finding ways to laugh at you and make the problem worse, right? Which, which is not going to convince that 35% but you're just chipping away. You're trying to take a few people, right? To tilt the, yeah. the poles and that, you know, and by the way, this is the other thing too. People might think, oh, we're in this, this period of time where the whole world has gone crazy. Why is this guy being uh, followed this way? Okay, go back to history. Remember Nixon when he was thrown out of office, right? Yeah. But okay, so, and his own party threw him out of office, back when they were more honest, right? But he left office with the same level of support that Trump has from his base. The people in his base then didn't want him to go. So the people right. that are your people, they don't let you go. You always have a large number of people, many millions. You can commit crime. I mean, come on, Nixon. Yeah, he was not me. Although compared to Trump, you know, Nixon right. compared to Trump was was a uh, people say that he would have been considered far left in today's Republican Party. <laughs> can you imagine? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's the thing that if you ever think, well, how can there be so many millions? That's just, you know, it's kind of par for the course. It's the way right. it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Have you ever taken a look at Barron? No, I haven't. I should, but I haven't looked. Why? There's what a lot you... of stuff coming out about him. I don't know if it's true. It's just for a hearsay. But there was just a, apparently the people in the school now that he's graduated are talking about him. Apparently he told people that his mom and dad weren't even living together when he started to run for president. Two years they hadn't lived together. And they were planning on divorcing. And then when he started to run for president, they went to the negotiation table. It's a little clear because you can tell she's just not that into it. Well, I mean, can you imagine being around Trump? I mean, honestly. Oh, listen, things are really getting bad for Putin. Now, for some reason, I was telling everybody 25 was when you were saying was the final final. Well, are you seeing no. anything lately? Tw 25, 26, because the the entry in 25 is pretty brief. 26 is when you get the full rush of Saturn, Neptune. They're going to be in Aries for good. But yeah, no, that that's exactly it. That, you, you know, you see this in astrology quite a bit as well, that particularly people that are misaligned, you start to see the, the situation shift ahead of the actual shift in the planets. It's the same for um, Netanyahu, you know, he's kind of teetering, it's, it's going in that direction as well. But if you look at it today, you'd say, well, come on, nothing seems to be happening. He's still in charge. He is. But like you said about Putin, when you have to defend, you know, the Ukrainians did what I thought they should have done long ago. They went into Russia, right? I can't believe it. Yeah. I can't believe it. And and they're the, the Russians are just laying their guns down and saying, we'll go with you. Because, you know, that's the thing. It would be like it'd be like if the U.S. invaded Alabama, you know, well, which maybe wouldn't be a bad idea, but OK, sorry. <laughs> I apologize, everyone. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it's that kind of thing that you think to yourself, probably a lot of them have maybe relatives, friends, whatever. And uh, and then the other thing, 
he is running out of people because the war has lasted a long time. And now you get this, you know, it's like the diagram where you see the two curves blending where he's used up all the people. The mothers in Russia are getting more and more upset because oh, yeah. their children are dying and the war isn't going well. So he's maneuvering himself into a really bad situation because Ukraine has more incentive because they're surviving for their life. They want to protect their country. Right, so. Right. It's much easier to fight when you're fighting for your life than when you're fighting because and the men you know, that are going out there are starving. Yeah, they're not feeding them, they're not taking care of them. So yeah. they're just putting their guns down and hoping to get a drink and a good meal, or maybe some clean some clean underwear. I mean, they're they're not asking for much. So I say we send Ukraine everything they need to take care of the Russian people because they just walked into a town that. Putin took over. I can't remember the name of it. And nobody protested. Yeah, no, it, it, uh, it, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I mean, uh, is this the other thing too that he, his chart, even with the some victories that he's had, it's not well aligned, right? So it's it's sort of like Trump's victories. Oh, he had a great debate. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Now, now you go and you, wait a second. He him himself is telling you, wish I hadn't done that. I got yeah. walked into a trap, right? Well, they're telling him he needs to come to the table and say, okay, I'm out of Ukraine. Yeah, no, right, exactly. So, so, and, and the more the U.S. helps them and the more pressure they put on the situation, the better deal they're going to get in the end. I mean, I'm hoping that they'll get all or most of their country back because I, I, I don't see how, how is it fair that this guy gets any land in Ukraine? You know, yeah. how, for what reason? Yeah, but I'm glad to hear they're not having to kill that many people. They're just walking in and they're laying their guns down. I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah, that's smart. That's what the Italians did in the Second World War. When uh, the Allies started invading from the South, the Italians surrendered and became part of the Allied. Uh, you know, they started hunting Germans. <laughs> before the, before, yeah, I mean, that's a smart move. I mean, I think the French, too. Oh, the French, too. Yeah, yeah, that's that's they how it. Yeah, they hated it turned. It turned, but Italy, you know, that was the end of Mussolini because once the Italians turn the other way, now you've got, you know, a major force that can push back. Well, you know, I was reading the cards yesterday uh, with my group here, and I took a look, see, and I really think before Biden leaves, we may have some sort of ending with Ukraine as far as some sort of negotiation comes up. It's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Like, I mean, in a way, in a way, I'm, I'm hoping that it's the next administration, just in that the more time you let this, if provided you fund them, the more trouble he gets into because... Well, also, Putin is hoping that Trump would win. And when Trump definitely doesn't win, he's out to lunch. Yeah, I guess exactly. It's the, it's the only solution they have if they hope to, yeah, to defang Ukraine. It's there the was a Russian psychic on a show. Somebody sent me the link. And uh, I couldn't post it because she swears really bad. And uh, she's just a little old lady with the scarf, you know, the Russian. And she said, I'm going to tell you, back when all this started, I said that Putin was going to lose big time. Well, Ukraine was going to take, you know, wipe them up. And the guy, some guy was saying, well, you know, they have Russia has all this equipment and everything. And she said that Ukrainians are going to take that equipment and tear it down and dance in the streets. So people were telling me that a lot of farmers will take these tanks and take them out to their fields and tear them down for scrap metal and stuff. So yeah. it's happening yeah. right now. But she said she said this back when it first started. Russia's going to lose big time. Yeah, I, I mean, I can totally see it. Uh, you know, in the end, a lot of this is a matter of economics and Russia doesn't have the economic no. power to sustain a war. That's where getting into it with the U.S. is a really bad idea because the U.S. has a lot more resources, right? That's where talking about nukes is really bad, too. He's talking about nukes again, like he always does. Yeah, well, he does. But I mean, nukes, nukes is like, this is a, a silly talk. It, nukes are silly talk because you can't nuke anybody. If you nuke anybody, you, you've got a problem, You're big not. problem immediately. Now, it's bad for everybody, of course, but you can't even nuke Pakistan. Don't do that. Pakistan has nuclear weapons. They'll shoot them at you. Yeah. you know? That's like nu nukes are like you and I are in a room and I'm threatening you with a grenade. 
and you go, well, what are you going to do? You're going to throw the grenade? Okay. Then both of us go down. How does this work? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, this is it's crazy talk, but I think I think well, a lot except of that is... I'd manage to take you out if you threatened to take my sandwich. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, but it's that logic that you know they were talking in the Russian media. Oh, we should we should throw a nuke at at, at Great Britain. Great Britain has nuclear nuclear weapons. You can't do that. And they'll detect it before it comes in. Even if they detect it after, even if they detect it after everything is is blown up, they'll still have the thing to throw at you and you're going to be in trouble. And all the other nations would join them. Yeah, it's just not a good idea. You know, that, 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 that. yeah, it's just talk. I mean, it, it, it's not like you can also develop better nuclear weapons. What does better nuclear weapons mean? It's silly, it, not to oh, mention. And, and they even showed that Ukraine was able to blow up a cruise ship from North Korea or it was packed with North Korean missiles. Did you see that? I didn't see. Got it down. It was wonderful. They blew it up. Yeah. No. What I mean. Well, they, if they have the, I think Ukraine, if they have the weaponry, they're very motivated for obvious right. reasons. You know, it affects their life in an immediate way. Yeah. And one of Putin's planes, very expensive plane, crashed out of the air, not because it got hit by a missile, because their ability to build their planes is so bad that it didn't have the correct whatever it needed, and it just plummeted. Yeah, well, I, I've never, I mean, look, it's a, it's a total fact that when you compare uh, the regimes, I mean, Russia has been trying to be equal dog or equal top thing to the U.S. They just aren't. That's the truth. You know, I mean, I remember even way back many, many years ago when I was first getting into trying to study the world and all that. And I remember reading this thing, there was this long article where when the there was a war between the Israeli war uh, in the late 60s or the early 70s and they mentioned how the Israelis won it really quickly and it was an air fight and yeah. and the the story said the Israelis were using American uh, jets and the other side was using Russian jets and I remember thinking okay so basically it's a question of the quality of the equipment right right so this is just the truth I know that this kind of talk is you know it's war talk no one wants war I get it, but if there is a war, in my opinion, you want to be on the right side of the war. You want to be on the side that has the the you know the, the better oh, tools. Right. Yeah, obviously, right. And I I can't think of this being great news for Putin that the U.S. and they, by the way, and Biden has ensured that the entire NATO is behind Ukraine as well because it's you know that they're on board. Germany Canada just gave permission to use their equipment in Russia. Yeah, exactly. So I mean. Uh, yeah, this is Putin's. It's it, to me, Putin is very similar to Trump. They're people that are they're at the end of the road. You know, they're at the end of the road with their life uh, now coalescing. Like call it karma, call it the accountability, whatever. They're both in that place. Uh, physically, you know, he just signed a, some, something in Russia that fourteen-year-olds can now sign, be drafted into his army. Oh yeah, that'll work. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure all the mothers will be really happy with that one. You know, sending their fourteen-year-old into war. You know? They're probably all going to move to wherever the Ukraine is located, just so their sons don't have to fight for them. It's very risky. I mean, I, uh, back in the Second World War, back then the thinking was different, and Stalin had many, many millions of soldiers that he could throw into battle. It's a lot harder to do that now because the public is too informed. You know, they know what is going on and they're, they're going to resist you. And that's why many people have left Russia when yeah. this thing, or started because they didn't want to go into the battle, you know, especially when it's a made up battle. I mean, if, you, if someone invades your country, then you have to fight. But this is like a war of choice. He decided he made that decision. Yeah. I want Ukraine for me. Right. I want to take the resources and use them for myself. So I keep one. waiting any minute now. They'll come up with some. He might try to throw a fast one and act for the stuff ask for the stuff he had already taken, they're going to say no. But he will have no choice because they got him by the throat. Yeah, it's not not a good scene. This, by the way, has been talked about by military analysts. I came across this thing where they were saying 2024 is the, is the hard year for Ukraine. Once you get into 2025, the situation That's switches. That's the truth, too. Yeah, and, it because, it, and really it was because of the stalling in Congress until Mike Johnson gave up the money up to he that point. A lot of lives. Yeah. 
yeah, it costs a so, lot. Of um, are, are you from Spain? Originally, yeah. Oh, did you see that horrible flooding going on there? No, I didn't see any. Where, where's the flooding? flooding going on. Just put flooding Spain. You'll see all kinds of videos. <laughs> I mean, it is Armageddon. Ouch. I can't believe the flooding that's taking place in your and fires in Turkey right now, horrible forest fires. Um, Utah had a horrible flood. You could see the window breaking with the water coming in. Um, the, it, just look for floods. It's 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 Armageddon. You know, I watch the Weather Channel all the time. So, yeah, that's that's how you're gonna get the yeah. The so it's the um, it's the another one of the big arguments about whether or not to take climate change seriously. Because if you listen to Trump, you know, oh, there's the, the seas will rise one eighteenth of an inch. You know, this is a lie. It's a, it's a total lie, right? But uh, there have been more. You know bigger storms and I know for a fact I mean you probably have experienced this the smoke this never used to be a thing no we never went through this until recent oh, years and then China's broken two bridges have broken with their flooding yeah no so it's, it's it's a definite factor but it's another reason why it's so important to make sure Trump and these guys don't get back into the White House because then they would set back the agenda for you know well you know Putin is decades. Making money from Trump so he's not going to get any money yeah yeah so listen we did talk before we came online about holly a little bit mm -hmm. his numbers you thought maybe he'll still win yeah holly i mean i i think that the odds of him uh winning are pretty good uh maybe maybe something happens in the next uh you know period of 60 days if you see the the average polls dropping to within a couple of points but when you see him ahead by 10 it's much harder to imagine him losing the race but what you do know though is that uh, in his chart he does have uh, he's a he's a another and a capricorn he and uh so then uh the expectation there as i would see it is that he is part of a senate that is not to his liking right going into uh, 25 26 27 which which would mean which is which is uh pointing to the outcome you know of the senate race how do you continue to see that do you continue to uh feel that the democrats win all three the presidency the i House? see i saw psychically i saw four senate seats being taken four four so hmm. i don't know what it is the, what do you mean taken like you mean going up like we're going to add to the senate because we take four seats Four seats. Well, then is they're really worried about um, Tester not winning. I send him money money monthly, and they still ask me for money. But Tester's going to win. I can tell you that much. Well, T Tester is the uh, Tester is the incumbent, and and uh, Tester will benefit a lot from Kamala's rise. You know that that was by the yeah. way that was what that was what had Pelosi most scared. It's, she showed Biden, look at the Senate and House races. We're getting killed. Yeah. You know? So we need to turn this around. And sure enough, now down ballot, the numbers are up. The numbers and are up. And here's the other thing. Well, Emerson College, August 12th through 14th, they have Democrats at 40, 48%, and they have Republicans at 46 In where? In the Senate? And no, just the general election. Yeah, no, the general election, it it's tight still, but there have already been some polls with a five-point gap. Oh, and, I know. And the main thing is, well, you, you know how you know. This is how you know whether or not things are going well. The more you see Trump uh, doing rallies in North Carolina, because North Carolina, they won last time. That means he's defending territory, right? The more you know that the situation is rough. And if you ever see him go and do rallies in Florida, then there's real trouble. Right. Okay. The worst would be if they started doing rallies in Texas. <laughs> then you would know. Uh oh. <laughs> but big, you big know, I, I don't think, like you said, that guy, the gentleman you mentioned ahead, you said he's never seen anything like this. At lunch, yeah. I yeah. think when the poll, when we actually start voting, people are going to be pleasantly surprised. I think, it, but it's the ones who aren't in represented in these polls. It's your millenniums. It's your new people. It's all because everybody and your neighbor is going for Harris. 
the Native Americans, the, the Mexicans, everybody saying we're for Harris. I, I can totally see that. I mean, the only thing is, though, that the reason I hold back a little bit and being too optimistic is that in the bigger picture, we are in the echoes of the of the um, the Civil War, meaning that that period, the good side won, but it was super close and it caused a lot of problems around, you know, moving forward in a good way. So I'm not going to say yet, you know, that we're going to win big. I'm just going to say we're going to win, <laughs> but hopefully, we'll, win. Okay. yeah, because this is the thing, the bigger the win, the more you, you shut down the argument, right? But the, the most dangerous thing is the closer it is, the more people like Trump will think they can fight it in the courts and make noise, you know, uh, to try to reverse the, the situation. Well, you the don't... closer it is, the more he's going to fight it. But if it's by a landslide, he can't fight it. Then he can't fight it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. Well, we've yeah. been on for over, well, uh, going on an hour. Mm, I know. Time flies when I'm talking time with you. Time flies because we always have a good time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll continue soon. Uh, uh, next time we, we meet, we'll have, we can talk about what happened in the, in the convention. And if we, if we meet before the end of the month, then there's a key big planetary event happening there is a the uranus station happens right at the end of the month and into early september that's a key okay uh, you know because the way you know those stations is that there were two when the debate and the assassination attempt happened stations raise the they raise the tone the era station was kamala so stations tell you a lot and this one is the next big one that is coming up okay. end of month early september all right. All right, we'll say goodbye for now. Bye, everyone.